This will be a tour around Vestry House Museum, a local history museum in Walthamstow. The museum first opened in 1931 and is owned and run by the London Borough of Waltham Forest. The building that Vestry House Museum now occupies has been used for various purposes since it was built in 1730. It was originally constructed as a workhouse to provide the poor residents of Walthamstow's parish with somewhere to live and work. The initial building was two storeys and had just four rooms on each floor. Food would be cooked and eaten downstairs and the residents would work and sleep in the upstairs rooms. The downstairs room on the left of the entrance was also used as a meeting space for the vestry, an early form of local government who collected taxes and managed the development of the parish. The museum takes its name from these vestry meetings. The rather daunting sign over the entrance reads, If any would not work, neither should he eat. Although life in Victorian workhouses would have been tough, it would not have been as bad as later Victorian workhouses, such as the ones depicted in Charles Dickens's Oliver Twist. Structurally, this part of the building has changed very little. The corridor, staircase and doorways are all part of the original layout of the workhouse. The rooms to the right, which have now been combined to house a museum shop and reception desk, were originally used as the kitchen and dining room. The chimney over the kitchen can still be seen above some of the filing cabinets behind the desk. The end of this corridor would have led outside to the garden before the building was extended in 1814. The large room was used as the vestry room. The vestry would meet here to discuss matters concerning the workhouse as well as other parish affairs. Records of these meetings were also kept in this room and many of these papers are now held in our archives. This room is larger than the museum shop and reception area as it was extended in 1779. The original room was deemed too small for the vestry meetings and a decision was made to enlarge it. Whilst alterations were being carried out on this room, the vestry held their meetings in the Nags Head pub on Orford Road. The room above this one was also enlarged to provide sleeping room for the ever increasing number of residents. This room now displays an exhibition about life at the workhouse, including the kinds of people who have lived here and the sort of work they would have carried out. The records show the workhouse took in orphan children, widows, people in poor health and unmarried mothers. Most stayed in the workhouse for the rest of their lives, but some children left to take up apprenticeships or other work. When the building was expanded in 1814, this area was built as a laundry for the workhouse. You can see that these flagstones have been weathered by the water that would have been repeatedly washed over them. It is most likely that the women in the workhouse would have worked in the laundry, heating water, washing clothes and hanging them up to dry. As well as washing their own clothes and linens, records indicate that members of the public sometimes paid to have pieces washed by the workhouse inmates as well. This room was originally the workhouse master's room. He had his own fireplace which can be seen in the corner of this room. The fireplace shared a chimney with the one in the main vestry room. The room now houses our photo archive, a collection of 80,000 historic photographs from across the borough. This corridor was originally outside but was covered over with glass when the building was extended between 2000 and 2003. In 1756, a separate building was added to the workhouse site which houses an additional work area and a brew house. This corridor leads between what were originally the exterior brick walls of these two buildings. The two buildings remained separate and were used for different purposes until they were joined up when the museum opened in 1931. This exhibition room was added to the museum as part of the extension between 2000 and 2003. It houses our transport gallery. The main exhibit in the space is the Bremer car. This was one of the first British built cars with an internal combustion engine. 
It was constructed and first driven in 1892 by Frederick William Bremer at the age of 20. Bremer was a local engineer who built the car in a workshop behind his family home on Connaught Road. This room is used as our temporary exhibition gallery. It is currently displaying the We Are Here exhibition, created by local photography group Image 17. The exhibition features new and historic images of Windrush Generation residents of Waltham Forest and celebrates their vast contribution to our communities. You can find out more about the exhibition, listen to oral history recordings and see a taster tour of the exhibition website. We Are Here WF Org. In the workhouse days, this space would have been outside. It would have been part of the garden to grow crops for the workhouse and might have been the site of the pig pens. In the early 1840s, the workhouse was closed down and the inmates moved to the West Ham Union Workhouse in Leighton, which later became Langthorne Hospital. The parish retained the site and leased this building, the 1756 expansion, to the Metropolitan Police. Whilst the police occupied the site, this area was unroofed and used as an exercise yard. It was roofed over in 1933 when this building became part of the museum. This large room was originally built in 1756 as a new workspace for the workhouse inmates. From 1840, it was the main room of the police station. In 1870, the police officers stationed here were transferred to Leebridge Road Station and the building was used as an armoury by the Essex Volunteer Corps. In 1891, the Volunteer Corps were moved to the new site in Churchill Road and this building was used by a local building merchants for the next 40 years. The building merchants moved out in 1933 and this half of the property was reunited with the other half which had been opened as a museum in 1931. The search room holds a wide range of manuscript, printed and pictorial resources for research into all aspects of the history of Waltham Forest. This enables the museum to be a wide ranging primary source of information into the history of our local community. In 1933 Essex Hall, a large manor house built in 1596, was being demolished. Some of the 18th century wooden panelling was rescued from the manor and installed in this room as part of the museum expansion. Church Hill House, another Walthamstow manor house, was also being demolished around that time and the external doorway in this room was taken from that building. We now use the room as an exhibition space and it currently features an exhibition on Ensign, an early camera manufacturer who operated a large camera factory in Fullbourne Road, Walthamstow. Whilst this half of the building was a police station, there were two jail cells on this site. One can still be seen today. There is historic graffiti on the walls of the cell and we have some information about who was detained here from census data and other records. There were originally two cells at the police station. The bars above the doorway in the small room next to the cell indicate this was once a jail cell too. Seven cottages were added to the site in around 1840 for the police officers to live in. Most of these have now been removed, but two are now used as staff rooms and offices and can be seen from church path that run alongside the museum. In the workhouse days, the inmates would have worked and slept in all the original upstairs rooms. After the workhouse inmates were moved in 1840, this half of the building was retained by the vestry for meetings, whilst the police leased the other half. However, in 1872, a new Public Health Act meant the parish were no longer in charge of civic affairs. In 1882, this part of the house became the headquarters of the Walthamstow Literary and Scientific Institute. Then, in 1892, it became a private house and was occupied by the Maynard family. Between 1912 and 1930, it was occupied by Miss Constance de Maine Saunders, a Justice of the Peace and an active member of the Walthamstow Antiquarian Society. Saunders offered her lease to the local council in 1930, and it was decided to turn the building into a museum. Vestry House Museum was opened in 1931 and expanded in 1933 when the building merchants moved out and the two halves of the building could be reunited. 
The upstairs room of the older part of the building are now used to tell the history of the borough. This room is a recreation of a Victorian parlour, such as the ones included in Warner Estate properties built in Walthamstow in the 19th century. This room explains what life was like in the borough in the 19th and 20th centuries, including during the wars. Due to the Second World War, Vestry House Museum was closed from 1939 to 1950. Thankfully, the building was not damaged by any bombs. This room also provides excellent views over the gardens, which are maintained by a dedicated group of volunteers. As well as the Ensign Camera Factory, Walthamstow was once home to many other manufacturers, including several tin toy companies. This room provides details on the different toys that were made in the borough, including toy soldiers and farm animals made by Britons. The windows in this room overlook the entrance courtyard where we started the tour. This tour finishes giving a snapshot of the beautiful gardens of Vestry House Museum. The planting is inspired by the history of the 18th century workhouse garden, with an emphasis on useful plants, including vegetables, herbs and dye plants. There is also a wild meadow area and a bed designed to attract butterflies. All of this is made possible by our extremely dedicated team of garden volunteers.